हमने जो आजादी की लड़ाई छेड़ रखी है उसे तब तक जारी रखना होगा जब तक हमें मुकम्मल आजादी हासिल न हो हाय एवरीबॉडी वेलकम टू क्यूरियस आंसर टू द क्वेश्चन ऑफ हु गॉट इंडिया हर इंडिपेंडेंस इज सिंपल एंड स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड इट्स बोथ गांधी जी एंड नेता जी along with many more brave men and women but since school we are being taught that we got our freedom on nonviolent methods of gandhi ji but the answer to this question if freedom was attained only by means of nonviolence then it's a big no the song translates into O oh, saint of Sabarmati you have made a miracle you gave us our freedom without sword and shield this lyrics is an unbashed insult to 26000 martyrs of INA the INA had an overall strength of 60000 of these as per official INA history some 26000 laid down their lives this amounts to staggering 43% of the force that was martyred It is an awe-inspiring scale of casualties and sacrifice and is an unmitigated insult to all those martyrs to call the Indian freedom struggle as entirely peaceful and non-violent. British success in completely dividing the Indian population was evident during the years of First World War. when there was no rebellion in India and even as the bulk of British Indian army was deployed overseas. Service in such army had a homogenizing impact and it somehow revived the dying idea of India. The least they expected from the British at the end of this war was a gratitude and perhaps some form of home rule. However, in response, what we got was 1999 massacre of Jallianwala Bagh. Post Jallianwala Bagh, Gandhi ji took charge of the Congress and turned it into a genuine instrument of mass-based but a passive resistance. He asked for genuine freedom or purna swaraj. He turned the non-cooperation movement into mass-based mobilization that went out of the towns, reached out to and mobilized the Indian peasantry and the workers. This electrified the nation. However, Subhash Chandra Bose differed radically from Gandhi ji. Bose was convinced that non-violence was completely within the tolerance threshold of the empire the only indian in the congress who could really challenge the overriding authority of the mahatma gandhi was subhash chandra bose for him world war 2 presented a golden opportunity to reach out to the enemies of britain that is germany and japan and seek their help to free india gandhi ji opposed this realist mode of thought bose was completely marginalized in the congress Gandhi ji ensured that he did not become president of the congress for the second time though it was Gandhi ji who had initially forced Bose out of the congress and virtually forced him to leave India towards the midpoint of the world war 2 both men had developed a sneaking admiration for one another Bose had called Gandhi the father of nation because of his undisputed role in graduating the freedom struggle in India from old styled debating clubs of original congress to mass based grassroots movements that gandhi ji had spread to the villages gandhi ji felt that the time had come to do or die as time went on he increasingly began to veer towards bose's view that the british would not leave unless they were really forced to go despite reservations expressed by nehru chandrashekhar azad and others gandhi ji insisted on launching the quit india movement British were busy fighting a world war 2 and were in no mood to indulge the naked indian fakir they mustered some five divisions worth of white troops and crushed the quit india movement with a ridiculous ease war time censorship helped them to banish gandhi ji and his freedom struggle from the newspaper headlines deprived of the oxygen of publicity the quit india movement collapsed like a pack of cards single handedly however netaji escaped to germany and there raised Indian Legion a brigade sized force formed from the Indian prisoners of war he was however was never in favor of hitler's racism meanwhile 
Japanese had gained spectacular success in Asia Pacific theater. They had raised an Indian national army from the prisoner of war they had held. Germans took 13 long months to transfer Indian national army to Netaji. Eventually, Bose expanded the INA to a respectable size of 1500 officers, 60000 men, out of which 26000 of them perished in the battle of Impal and Kohima and subsequent retreat through the Burma. After the war, the British put on trial nine INA officers at an iconic red fort in Delhi. This enraged the people of India and triggered widespread mutinies in Royal Indian Navy, Royal Indian Air Force and many units of British Indian Army. British were truly shaken to the core. Some 2.5 million men of British Indian Army were then being demobilized post World War II and they were angry and enraged. British had no stomach for taking on 2.5 million armed men of Indian Army as their white troops were tired, war weary and homesick. Now British decided to quit India with the grace. British now began to rely far more on highly manipulable Nehru than on Gandhi ji. Even as Gandhi ji veered around to Bose's view of now or never chance to win freedom, Nehru was increasingly inclined to go along with the British. In fact, he went so far as to proclaim that if Bose was to come to India with the Japanese invading armies, he would personally go forward to fight him. This was noted by British and after quit India movement, they began an all out attempt to completely marginalize Gandhi ji and rely more and more on Nehru. By the time of independence, the marginalization of Gandhi ji was total and complete. Power did not go to Neta ji or any anti-British Indian National Army but to the people who had virtually collaborated with British. While the others fought and laid down their lives, these leaders waited patiently on the sidelines to grab the fruits of power. Forgotten are some 26,000 INA soldiers who had laid down their lives to free the country and if those soldiers had left to the non-violence alone, freedom would have come to us somewhere in 1980s or 1990s. Do let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you.